In this video we're going to create this sort of effect and you can use it on any object that you want. So let's get started. I'm going to turn on screencast keys and overlays and I'll delete everything we've currently got in the scene. So the first thing is to add your object, whichever object you want. I'm going to use Suzanne and control two to add some subdivisions. That will create a subdivision modifier set to two levels of subdivision. F3 and then type smooth and then choose shade smooth to uh, make sure it's shaded nice and smoothly in the viewport. Okay, and what we'll do then is add an explode modifier into the stack. And if I press play now, still nothing will happen. So that's because it needs a particle system in order to work. So into the particle tab, click on plus and then press play. We're getting the particles, but it's having no effect on the actual geometry. And the reason is we need to move the particle settings above the explode modifier. And if I press play now, then it is breaking up the geometry. Let's hide the spheres so we can see what's happening. So into the particle settings, down to the render section, and just change the render as from halo to none. And then press play again. And there we are. Okay, so what we need to do is control the direction of the uh, particles. So the first thing we can do, we can change the gravity to maybe 0.6 so they don't fall as quickly. And then we'll add a little bit of wind. So shift A and then a force field and we'll choose wind. And I'm going to rotate the wind on the Y axis to around about here. Press play. And it's not really strong enough to have much of an effect. So let's go into the physics tab and just turn the strength up to maybe uh, something like eight. I think it's now blowing away. It's uh, the static particles are the dead particles that are left over from the modifier. So if we go into the modifiers panel, just make sure to uncheck dead on the explode. And then it'll make sure as soon as particles are dead, it doesn't show them. So they'll become invisible basically. Okay, and then under the particles, they're dying a little bit too quickly. So I'm going to go up to the top, change the lifetime to maybe uh, 100. And that will ensure that they live a little bit longer. And I also want a little bit of turbulence. So there's two ways we can do it. We can firstly add a turbulence force field and turn up the strength of that, maybe to 5. Give that a try. So that is having an effect. Maybe try a little bit higher. Maybe 15. And that's much much better. Okay, so what else can we do? We need to increase the number um, of particles. So let's click on this. Suzanne, into the particle settings. And we'll increase that to maybe 5,000. So now we're getting a lot more particles. And it's also dependent on the number of subdivisions. So the more subdivisions you've got, it will be slower though, but so uh, you'll have the opportunity to turn uh, the number of particles higher. But because I'm using such a small particle count, there's no point in turning the uh, viewport subdivision up. So you'll notice that it's, it's quite slow and it's also quite random where the particles are breaking up from. So what I want to do is, I want the particles to travel in one direction, uh, well, to break away sort of uniformly across the model. So to do that, I'm going to change it from a jittered distribution to a grid distribution. And I'll also need to increase the resolution because now the resolution here is what controls the number of pieces. So if I press play, for example, then you can see we're not getting uh, many pieces at all. If I increase this to 60, then we're back to having quite a large number of particles. And you'll notice we're getting a weird effect. Don't worry too much about that. That's just because it needs to be baked in order to work properly. Uh, I also find turning on invert and hexagonal grid also has a uh, positive effect. So if, uh, try that now. We are getting a much more realistic sort of breakaway. Okay, and the second thing I want to look at is the speed at which uh, Suzanne disintegrates. So I'm going to change that to, in the particle system, the lifetime, end, sorry, the end 
uh, time is how long it's going to take for all of these particles that are generated here to appear. So if I have them all appear on one frame, so if I change the end time to two, that means it's going to start on frame one and it's going to finish uh, generating the particles on frame two. So we're going to get all of these particles in one frame. Let's have a look at that. So that's that sort of effect. And I want it to be not quite that fast, so I'm going to change this to happen over maybe 30 frames. And just bear in mind as well, it's only calculating at 7 frames per second currently on my system, so it will be a lot faster once it's cached. So it's a good idea to play it for a little while so it caches, which is the red line at the bottom here. Press play and then you get a better idea of how long it's actually going to take. And as I mentioned, the weird uh, things that we're getting over here, just all you need to do to fix that is under the cache settings, just click on bake. So it's going to bake that now. So see now it's getting fast. And there we go. So if I play this back, this is now full speed. And let's just uh, have a look at that. Okay, so in the video that I showed at the beginning, it was actually breaking up from the right hand side. Uh, and in order to control that, the direction in which it disintegrates, all we need to do is look at how it's been generated. So we're using the grid method. And basically what the grid method does, if I just quickly create a cube, and then I'll subdivide this cube, maybe a few times and change that to Uh, simple. I'm going to wireframe and turn off optimal display. So basically we've got this grid that uh, encompasses the geometry and each one of these cubes that the grid is made up of uh, is given a number and the number is generated depending on the direction of the object's x-axis. So we'll get zero um, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, and it will get larger until we get over this side to the number of divisions that we've got, and then it will basically just finish. So we'll get rid of that. So in order to get the direction to change, I need to change the direction of the origin so of the monkey. So what I can do is I can use the options and change this to origins, and then press R, Z, 180, so that's changed the direction of the x-axis to point over here. So just disable that now. And then if I play this back, I also need to make sure I get rid of the bake. So into the particles, delete the bake. And it's still not deleted the bake. We've got 131 frames in memory. Delete all bakes. Nope, didn't work. So what I need to do is just change one setting. and then just change it back and then you can see it's breaking up from the opposite direction and again if we now bake this I'll just change it to 50 just so it bakes a little bit faster this time so bake that okay and turn the overlays off and press play and now we're getting sort of the same thing we had initially I'll just change the end time now to uh, Let's see where did it end. Round about there. So one, three, two. And then we can loop it. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.